All right, let's tackle this new problem out. And in this problem, what we're going to do is, well, we're going to read that question first. The question sentence is way too important, way too important here. So it says, what is the selling price? So we have to keep that in our minds here. Again, we're talking about some item, but we want to know the price that we are selling it for. Notice, I'm going to show you how keeping focused on what we want helps us sort through this information that we're going to receive. So a store marks up an item that costs $240 by 25%. Okay, so everybody, riddle me this. If we have this item that costs $240 and we are marking it up, as they say here, marking it up by 25%, what does that 25% really represent? What does that 25% represent? Yeah, it represents a markup. And what do we do with markups, everybody? If we're trying to get the selling price, so that final price that we sell it for, what are we doing with the markup once we calculate the actual amount of that markup? Yeah, it's increasing the price. We're going to mark it up. So before we even calculate, we can figure out which of these answers doesn't make sense yet. Because everybody, guess what? If the original price is 240 and the price is being marked up, which of these answers is impossible regardless of how much the markup is? Yeah, answer choice A is impossible. It's less than what we started with. With a markup, you can expect this number to go up. So that's why automatically, before we continue, answer choice A, it wouldn't work. But let's go ahead and get into it here. Here, we have $240 with a 25% markup. So we'll calculate 25% of 240 because that's going to give us the amount of that markup, that amount that we're increasing by. So here we go. We'll do 0 0.25 times 240. Or we can use a little bit of mental math if we wanted to. And we can say, hey, I can just move one decimal place here, one over there. But that's just getting cute and fancy. So we can just go ahead and keep things simple. by just doing 0 0.25 multiplied by 240. Here we go. I'm going to write that down over here. And we're going to get straight to calculating. So first, we have 0 times 5. That'll be 0. Then 4 times 5 is 20. And we'll carry the 2. And then we have 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 2 is 12. So from here, we'll go ahead and mark a 0 down. And now we'll start working here. So we have 0 times 2, 0. 4 times 2, that's 8. And then 2 times 2, that'll be 4. Add this all up, and we end up getting 10. Carry the 1, and that'll be 6. So that's not 6,000. That is going to be 60, because we have two decimal places over here. And we'll bring those two decimal places back. So there's our 60. So from here, there it is. 0 0.25 multiplied by 240. That is $60. But again, everybody, this is the markup. This is the markup. That is what we are adding back to get that selling price. So we had the original $240. And we're adding the $60 markup. And that's what brings us to the final amount here. And that'll be $300. That is going to be that selling price after the 25% markup. So again, that's how we achieve answer choice C as the correct answer. So this question here begins by asking, what was the total running time in hours? Okay, sounds good. So what was the total running time in hours? So we want a total. And so my party people, the word total, that's going to hint at what operation typically. Yeah, typically the word total is going to hint at addition. Yeah, we're trying to add everything up. Exactly. So we're going to go ahead and try to add up all of this specifically running time. That matters. Again, it's not just about the operation, it's about the context. So what we want is the total running time. All right, cool. 
So to get that, we have to understand all the different times that we're running for, add that all up, and we'll be all good. So with that, here we go. It says a generator ran for 7,200 seconds, then it rested 15 minutes, and then ran for another 30 minutes. So the total running time, what is that going to be? The total running time is going to be right over here, 7,200. But that's in seconds. And we're going to be adding that with the 30 minutes. So my party people, quick question. What doesn't matter here? The answer should be the 15 minutes. We rested for 15 minutes. We rested for 15. So we're not going to count that. So let's concern ourselves only with 7,200 seconds and the 30 minutes. So here, 7,200 seconds, my party people, we got to turn that into hours. And we're going to have to use two conversions. So number one, we have one minute being equal to 60 seconds. And then we have one hour being equal to 60 minutes. Right there. So with that, what we're going to do when we trace over the operations that we're going to be doing, whether it's multiplication or division, it's going to be division twice. Because here, to go from seconds down to a minute, that is division by 60. And then once we have the minutes, to get to an hour, we got to divide again. So we have to divide by 60, then divide by 60 again. The conversion between seconds and hours is one hour equals 3,600 seconds. So hopefully, you know, if we don't have any sense or understanding of the one hour to 3,600 seconds conversion, hopefully dividing by 60 twice still makes sense. So let's go ahead and get it going here, my party people. So we can either divide by 3,600, in which we do if we do. How many times does 36 go into 72, everybody? How many times does 36 go into 72? Yeah, exactly twice. And because we're dividing, we know that we can cancel those zeros out. So that's how we can see that it's 72 divided by 36. It's like looking at, you know, uh, it's like looking at 100 divided by 50. That turns into 10 divided by 5. So with that, we have two hours. But we still have the plus 30 minutes. My party people, how can we re-represent 30 minutes as hours? How much of an hour is 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes is the same as half of an hour. So we can add that as, again, 0.5 hours so boom we can convert that right there on the spot and that gives us two hours plus half an hour which is going to be 2.5 hours and there we are that's how our answer becomes answer choice c 2.5 hours and let's try this next one out so the question states to evaluate 4p times 3 minus 10 when p equals 2. Sounds good. So what we'll do, as always, when it comes to evaluating expressions, is we'll plug in p as 2, and then we'll evaluate from there. So we have 4p, which is the same as 4 times p, which will be 2. And then we have times 3 right after, right there. Then we'll subtract 10, and now it's time to evaluate. So from here, we see that we have 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So I'll do all three of those together to get 24. Then I subtract 10, and that gives me 14. So there we are, everybody. The correct answer here is A, 14, and we are good.